the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Determined Traveler. Standing in the lobby of the Hotel Continental in Pisa, Italy, with a group of some 20 other tourists, Clara Marshall, age 25, and attractive enough to draw attention anywhere, was smiling quietly to herself, and with good reason. Yes, Clara, for the past eight months you've handled things perfectly, haven't you? Wanted by the Chicago police for your part in a series of fraudulent stock transactions, you slipped out of town and covered your tracks so successfully, they lost all trace of you. Some weeks later, in a Los Angeles bookstore, you casually made the acquaintance of elderly, wealthy Harriet Wilson. And you took full advantage of this chance meeting, didn't you, Clara? Yes. Now you're not only her trusted employee, but her friend and traveling companion on a tour of Europe, and waiting on a foggy Italian morning to accompany her on a guided tour of Pisa. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm forced to cancel today's tour. It's too foggy. What do you mean? Oh, but, Guy, the, the streetcars are running. You needn't drive the bus. I'm sorry, Miss Marshall. It would be impossible to take a group this size through the foggy city on streetcars. It's too dangerous. But we don't plan to come through this city again. And, and uh, Miss Wilson had so counted on seeing the Leaning Tower. Isn't that right, Harriet? Yes, I had looked forward to it. And you know we're leaving this afternoon. Please, Guy, won't you reconsider? Uh... Miss Marshall, in the interest of the group as a whole, I... I I'm sorry, really, I... Oh. Uh, pardon me, pardon me, miss. I couldn't help overhearing it. It seems a shame that visitors who are so interested in seeing historical places shouldn't see them. Well, it looks as if not much is going to be done about that. Well, I was going to suggest oh. that uh, I'd be glad to take you to the Leaning Tower. It really isn't far from here. Oh, would you? Oh, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it, Harriet? Well, uh, why, yes, it would. Well, good. Let's not lose any time. This way, ladies. <laughs> You smile, don't you, Clara? Leaving the hotel and boarding the crowded streetcar. And as you steal a glance at the stranger, you notice that he's studying you, too, very closely, as if memorizing every detail about you. Harriet, meanwhile, is quite excited about the whole adventure as the car rattles along the street. Clara, just think about going through the streets of Pisa, in the fog, and on a streetcar. <laughs> it's all so thrilling. <laughs> it, it was nice of you to offer to escort us. It means a lot to see places we've seen in pictures so often. I want to go to the top of the tower and look down. I say that's where Galileo proved his theory about weights falling at the same rate of speed, you know. Oh, yes. I'd like to try dropping something. <laughs> uh, oh, you'll have to excuse me, ladies. I'm sorry. What? I won't be able to take you to the tower today, after all. What? Well, you said it wasn't far. I'm really sorry, but it's unavoidable. Let's get off at the next stop. Huh? Seems we have no choice. Oh, but in this fog... You'll be all right. Get off at the third stop on the returning car, and you'll be right at your hotel. As we'll remember. I'm sorry, really. It's just that I have an important appointment. It's later than I realized. This just isn't my day. Thanks anyway, Mr... Uh... Hungate. Raymond Hungate. I'll see you later. Goodbye for now. As the three of you step from the streetcar, Raymond slips something into your pocket, quickly puts his fingers to his lips to silence you, and suddenly he's gone into the fog. 
As you look around, you notice two men who left the streetcar just before it pulled away hurry off in the same direction that Raymond took. You feel sure they're following him, don't you, Claire? Harriet seems concerned only with watching for a returning car. She seems relieved as it appears. My goodness, I'll be glad when we get back to the hotel. Little did I think we'd be left here in the fog. I'm sure it'll all work out okay. Don't worry, dear. But he seems such a nice young man. Mm. Well, we tried, Harriet. Can't win every time. Back at last. This hotel room looks good to me. My, to think he offered to take us there, only to leave us stranded in the middle of a strange city in the fog. Oh, I believe he meant to take us, but something he couldn't help caused him to leave. Well, perhaps you're right. Oh. <laughs> now that we're back safe and sound, I'll admit it was a thrill. And he was nice looking, wasn't he? <laughs> yes. And it seemed he was going to be an interesting guide. He was an American, but seemed very much at ease here in this foreign land. I wonder where... Harriet, I, I believe it's best not to discuss this with the others on the tour. Oh, oh maybe you're right. Well, they'd have the laugh on us if they knew the details. Let, let's admit we didn't get to the tower, but forget the rest. Hmm? You're right, my dear. I wonder what the others are doing now. I'm probably playing bridge. Why don't you go down and see if they have enough for full tables? I believe I shall. Don't you want to come along? Uh, not right now, but uh, let's keep this our secret. Between you and me, I believe we'll see Mr. Raymond Hungate again. Oh, I do hope so. My, isn't this romantic? Wouldn't it be something clearer if you met your future husband here in Italy on a foggy day? Oh, you're going overboard, Harriet. It's time you joined your friend. All right, but I like the idea anyway. You'll join us soon. In a little while, Harriet, yes. <sighs> You feel relieved when the door finally closes, don't you, Clara? And you cross the room quickly. Get Raymond's package from the pocket of your coat. You unwrap it, open the box carefully, and gasp as you view its contents. A necklace. A beautiful diamond necklace. You're startled, aren't you, Clara? As you wonder if a fortune in jewels was actually thrust into your hand if the diamonds of the necklace are real. It seems unlikely that a perfect stranger would entrust you with something so valuable. But as the tour moves on to the city of Rome, you manage to leave Harriet for a short time and seek out a reliable-looking jewelry store. I, I want to see if the clasp on a necklace is all right. I'd be very glad to help you, miss. Here it is. My, how that beautiful. And so well designed. Uh, Worth many thousands of American dollars, eh? Uh, well, I, I suppose. Ah, but it is, miss, I know. A very valuable piece. Uh, the, the clasp seems all right? Uh, ah, yes, yes. It seems in perfect order. But it is well to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You see, my employer wanted to wear it tomorrow evening, but wanted to be sure that it would be safe. Oh, yes, yes, I understand that. Now, uh, could I show you anything while you're here? Not now, thank you. But what you tell me about the necklace is most assuring indeed. If you're like most drivers, this wonderful weather we've been having lately must make you want to head your car for the seashore, the mountains, or just the open highway. Naturally, these trips make you more concerned about gasoline mileage, the thing Signal Gasoline is famous for. But mileage, mind you, is just one of the benefits you notice when you switch to Signal. After all, to give you such good mileage, Signal Gasoline has to help your engine run more efficiently. So efficiently, you save gasoline three ways. One, you save gasoline with Signal's prompt starting. Two, you save gasoline with Signal's smooth pickup. And three, you save gasoline with Signal's full power. The kind of performance makes driving more fun. That's why motorists with a zest for driving pleasure, as well as those who appreciate economy, 
are both enthusiastic about Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go far with go-farther gasoline. Events have conspired to bring you luck, haven't they? Unexpectedly, a man named Raymond Hungate, escorting you to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, deserted you, but left a valuable diamond necklace in your coat pocket. Now you find yourself thinking about the two determined-looking men who were following Mr. Hungate, and you realize that if by chance they caught up with him, the necklace will remain yours. But shortly after leaving the jewelry shop in Rome, you suddenly become aware of someone walking at your side. You look up quickly. Recognize the man you met in Pisa, Raymond Hungate. He speaks quietly as you near a small basement restaurant. Would you like some refreshments, Miss Marshall? No, um, no thanks. Oh, come on, be social. Hmm? After all, we have something important to discuss. Oh, all right. Yeah. I think this little basement restaurant should prove an interesting place. Yeah, nice and quiet, Table for two, please. Uh, this way. How about that one in the back corner? Very good, sir. Yeah. Uh, for now, we'd just like some coffee. Perhaps something else later on. Oh, very good, sir. Now, tell me, have you been enjoying your trip since you were so rudely left in the fog in Pisa? Yes, but no thanks to you. Oh, I apologize. It was unforgivable to leave you stranded, but believe me, <laughs> it was most necessary. So I gathered. Did your friends catch up with you? Uh, no. No, thanks to the fog, they didn't. And I want you to know I appreciated your cooperation. Think nothing of it. Uh, your coffee, sir? Thank you. Uh, were you satisfied that the diamonds were real? I noticed you were having a jeweler look the necklace over. Just making sure the clasp was in good condition. You'd have thought rather foolish if the clerk had recognized that necklace as a stolen one. Is it? Could be. Or hadn't you guessed? But if you'd known, you would, of course, have taken it to the authorities. Hmm? No, I've uh, thought about it. And then I thought about something else, Mr. Hungate. How would you like a partner? Did you say a partner? Well, don't be so overwhelmed. <laughs> you already have one, you know. Otherwise, I would have turned the necklace over to the police. You're right. You see, it could be a, an interesting setup if you're interested in stolen or black market jewelry. You'll sooner or later be suspected. Perhaps your room and luggage search. Eventually, you'll be caught. That isn't a very pretty picture. I'm serious. If someone were to take the jewels and keep them for you, someone who, who wouldn't be suspected, someone, say, who's just on uh, a sightseeing tour, huh. wouldn't it make your work easier? I'm beginning to see your point. Hmm. However, what about your traveling companion? She seems quite a chatterbox. Harriet, she'd be an asset. She's already set up a storybook romance for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'd keep quiet about our seeing one another from time to time. Uh, perhaps given the story that you're on some dangerous secret mission. Ah, the client might have some advantages. But how do I know I can trust two women? Haven't you already found out? For my part, I can use some extra income. I'm getting somewhat fed up playing nursemaid to Harriet Wilson. Well, I'll give it some thought. Meanwhile, do you want me to keep the necklace for you? Why, yes. You might as well. Partner. I thought so. <laughs> You feel quite proud of yourself, don't you, Clara? You've talked Raymond Hungate into a partnership in his jewel uh, collecting. Of course, you haven't found the source of the jewelry he passed along to you, but you do know that it's very valuable. That's why you keep the gems well hidden. And since it's necessary to keep your meetings with Raymond secret from the other tourists, you encourage Harriet to continue with her romantic ideas. Clara, my dear, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to know that you found such an exciting and adventurous friend. He is nice. Nice? He's wonderful. And to think he's in the Foreign Secret Service for our government. Shh, not so loud. Uh, oh, sorry, dear. Well, it could mean his life, you know, if people found out about that. He shouldn't even have told me. Oh, oh now, don't worry, Clara. I'll be careful. You can count on that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, but imagine meeting such a thrilling man here in a foreign land. 
He falls in love with you, and eventually, wedding bell. Oh, please, Harriet, I, I'll admit Raymond is fascinating, and I'm pleased with his attention, but well, he hasn't asked me yet. Oh, but he will. This young man's in love with you, and you're in love with him, too. I can tell. <laughs> I'm afraid you have spring fever, Harriet. Oh, you've been a changed person since you met him. You were always pleasant and nice to me. But now you seem to be, well, um, up in the clouds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am a little, but anyway, we keep this to ourselves. Oh, hmm? yes, of course, you can count on me. <laughs> Things are going smoothly, aren't they, Clara? You've made Harriet believe you and Raymond are deeply in love. And you're sure she will never question any of your meetings with him. You and Harriet accompany the others on the various tours of Rome and the surrounding country. But you also manage to see Raymond frequently. From time to time, he adds other gems to his uh, jewel collection. And he seems pleased with the arrangement you suggested. And then one day, you're a bit delayed in one of your scheduled meetings. You approach the back booth of a little cafe to find Raymond reading a letter. Uh, Oh, I didn't see you come in, Clara. You're slipping, Raymond. I thought you must always be on guard. Oh, I'm not worried. Even if accused, I have no loot for anyone to find. <laughs> not today. You seem very absorbed in your letters from the folks back home. Hardly. Don't be so inquisitive. Partners have a right to share, remember? Besides, I notice it's Morocco Jewelry Company in Naples. You ought to meet someone. Fast reader, aren't you? Oh, I'm a smart kid. Perhaps. But don't get too smart for your own good, huh? Could I, darling? Easily. Here, read the letter if you're so interested. Mm. An appointment at 11 p.m. in Naples, day after tomorrow. 11 p.m.? Isn't that a bit late? Not for a friend. A friend? The kind that exchanges gems for greenbacks? A lady is a genius. It adds up. An appointment at 11 at night in Naples, a friend. This man's your fence, isn't he? You're giving the answers. But I'll give you credit, you're usually right. We haven't discussed shares. How do I come in? You'll get what's coming to you, all right. 50-50? Now, that would be real nice, wouldn't it? There are some real nice jewels I've been carrying around. Now, how about my share? 50-50? It's a bit high. Partners, though. Well? <laughs> you drive a hard bargain, honey. But you do know the answers. Interesting, isn't it, Clara? When you return to the United States, you'll be a rich woman. The jewels Raymond has accumulated are worth a small fortune. And it shouldn't be long until you receive your share. Raymond admits he has an appointment with a man named Rocco in Naples to make the exchange. The jewels for a sum of money beyond your dreams. Two days later, you're on the train to Naples. An hour or so before you arrive, you knock softly on the door to Raymond Hungate's compartment. Oh, Clara, come on in. Anyone see you? No, of course not. Yeah. Bring the stuff in your purse? Yes, they laughed when I bought this purse that I didn't need any more luggage. But it has come in handy. <laughs> there they are. Look at them spark. Oh, pretty. Beautiful. Just think, how much would you say? 50000 for little Clara? Well, Rocco will want a commission, but they'll probably bring about seventy five grand. Yeah, it's not bad for a few weeks' work. Not bad at all. And even 37500 is... Uh, Slightly more than my usual income. Uh, Clara, we might as well understand each other. What? You've had some good ideas, and you've been very helpful. Thank you, darling. But you can get in the way. You take much too much for granted. Oh, come now, smile when you say that. Why? Clara, the uh, game is over. I'm about ready to cash in, and I don't need any excess baggage. You're joking. Look, you Can't don't mean you that you... can you figure the picture this time? We're almost into Naples. Your body can be found by the railroad tracks. By the time you're identified, I'll be in Naples. Have the dough. And be on a boat the good old USA. Don't be ridiculous. You'll be caught in a minute. What about Harriet? You've taken care of that. What? 
Harriet will only be able to tell them that she understands the job I have is very dangerous. That somehow you must have been killed by the men I was tracking down, or perhaps by accident. After all, she thinks we're so much in love. Don't be a fool, Raymond. Put that gun away. Stand near the window, Clara. When the next train whistle sounds, Put I... it away! I... I... Oh. You grab at Raymond's arm. Try and seize the gun as the two of you struggle. You look at the body of Raymond Hungate, slumped on the seat. Try to realize that you've killed him. You listen, expecting to hear people come clamoring into the compartment. But no one does. You realize that your struggle and the gunshot occurred during the outside noise. And that even as Raymond planned it, no one heard a thing. You look around the room, open the window and toss the gun out. Then you get Raymond's wallet, tear out the identification, put Rocco's letter into your purse. And of course, most important of all, you take all the gin. Now certain there's not a trace to suggest you're having been with Raymond. You quickly return to your own compartment. Oh, Clara, back so soon? I was just writing some postcards. That's nice. I'm surprised Mr. Hungett would let you leave so soon. Hmm. You seem quiet, dear. Is something wrong? I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, come now. If you had a quarrel... Please, Harriet, let's not discuss it. But, Clara, I thought he was about to propose. There's not going to be any wedding. I can assure you I never want to see Raymond Hungate again. Oh, dear. Oh, well, you'll feel better tomorrow, Clara. No, I'm through. In fact, Harriet, let, let's get everything together so that when we get to Naples, we can get off the plane right away and take a cab to the hotel and not wait for the rest of the tour. But, Clara... No, I mean it, Harriet. Like I said... I'm through with Raymond Hungett forever. Spring or no spring, summer or no summer, you wouldn't feel nearly as peppy, would you, if you had to keep right on wearing heavy winter clothes? Well, that's just how your car feels about running on tired old motor oil. That's why you've been seeing these words. Time to change on that sign outside Signal Station. Time to drain out old, sludgy, worn-out winter oil. Time to change to Signal Premium. Signal Premium. Heavy-duty Signal Premium. Now there's the oil that really protects your car. This proved and improved heavy-duty Signal Oil does more, much more than just lubricate. In addition, Signal Premium motor oil cools, cleans, cushions, seals, and protects Result: tests under all types of driving conditions prove new Signal Premium motor oil reduces engine wear 50%. Your engine keeps its like new pep and power twice as long. So since it's time to change, this time give your car a change for the better. Change to new heavy-duty Signal Premium motor oil at a signal station. Time to change. Time to change. Well, Clara, it's over, isn't it? Complete. As you hurry from the station, pretending that you want to avoid Raymond Hungry, knowing that his body is waiting to be discovered in his compartment. You're certain, too, that you left no trace of your having been there at all. But you do have the jewels safely put away in your purse. And you know where you can exchange them for currency, a great deal of it. And since you're to sail for the United States soon, the future looks very promising, doesn't it? And then... There's a knock at the door of your hotel suite. Yes? Miss Marshall? Clara Marshall? Yes. I represent the American consulate, Miss Marshall. Well, surely our passports are in order. Quite. I'm here on another matter. This is Police Chief Antrini. Police? But why? May we come in? Of course we do. Please sit down. Who is it, Clara? The gentleman from the consulate and the chief of police, Harriet. Uh, this is my employer, Miss Wilson, gentlemen. Oh, how do you do? Oh, this visit is quite flattering. You see, we are planning to leave for safety in a few days. Oh, we've had such a wonderful tour of the continent. Nice of you two gentlemen to drop in this way. I am afraid that my business may prevent your departure, Miss Wilson. Oh? You see, there has been a murder. A murder? But who? A man named Raymond Hungate. Raymond Hungate? Oh, how 
How terrible. Why, we saw him only today. Well, surely that there's some mistake. The police still have some checking to do, Miss Marshall. But Chief Antrini would like you to come down to his office. Oh, but this is hard to believe. It, it, it's such a shock. We knew Raymond's job at the Secret Service was very dangerous. Uh, Harriet, but... there may be some mistake. Oh, I do hope so. Uh, anyway, I'll go along to identify him. If it is Raymond. Oh, Sarah, my poor dear. I am sure you misunderstand, Miss Wilson. Chief Antrini is arresting Miss Marshall on suspicion of murder. What? That is who? Why, that's preposterous. You've no reason whatever to suspect me. I think we have. We found Hungate's body in a compartment of a train that just arrived in Naples. He'd been shot, and the murder weapon is missing, as well as his own identification papers. But a card of Miss Harriet Wilson's here gave us the answer. What? You mean the card I slipped under the door of Raymond's compartment just before we left the train? Harriet, you didn't. I'm afraid she did, oh. Mr. Marshall. They were such a romantic couple. I couldn't let them break up. Uh, Miss Marshall, read the message on the card. Raymond Hungate, I'm sure you and Clara have just had a lover's quarrel and that all will work out all right. We'll be staying at the Imperial Hotel in Naples, signed Harriet Wilson. Well, Miss Marshall? All right, I did know him, but that doesn't say I killed him. No, but we know that Raymond Hungate had an appointment with a man named Rocco this evening to dispose of some stolen jewels. Hungate the thought Rocco was a friend. Actually, Rocco was working with the police. Very interesting. But what does all this have to do with me? Uh, nothing. Unless you have the juice. If you do, that's all we need for a conviction. Miss Marshall, let me see your purse. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Betty Lou Gerson, Gerald Moore, Norma Varden, Jane Novello, and Byron Kane. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Winifred Henson, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>